So what's going on guys, it's Captain America, hope you guys are well and thank you so much for coming on to the channel. So, as always starting off with the match stats, so this is actually a game against Emigras FC where we, we lost the first game against them 3-1 and then we, we bounced back 4-0 and this was the previous video that you can see from yesterday in which we, we avenged them. Uh, and they wanted another game, let's say, um, just to see if they could beat us and... Nah, man, it, it wasn't going to happen, man. Like, it was a pure thrashing, like, literally. Uh, we beat them 5-1 in total for this match. You know, in, in general, we had 50% possession. We had 11 shots in total, okay? 11 shots, and they only had one shot. And that one shot was the most dumbest goal I've ever conceded. Like, I don't know why it, the, the was it FIFA does this. It, it pulls your player to the ball, and then it, I don't know what happened. It just moved him away, and, like, I couldn't get the ball. Uh, so for some reason the uh, attacker got it and yeah, yeah, he scored so that was the only shot they had That was the only goal that they had in the match, you know, I was a bit disappointed. I didn't get the clean sheet um, Especially as we dominated them completely, you know, our pressing pressing overall Was uh, you know uh, on point our passing was slick as well We did score some great goals for me. I did have one assist, you know, I had a 7.3 rating I had one assist which was I think the fourth goal so do check that out um, I had only one possession won, I didn't have any possessions lost, and I didn't make any tackles, but, you know, in generally the play that we have, you know, I've got my centre-back partner, uh, King Ping, who, who plays very aggressively, he's like a Rudiger, let's say, we do call him Rudiger uh, within the team, so he usually does all the nitty-gritty work, and I'm always there, just slightly a bit deeper, just the positioning and just making sure that there's no, like, lob balls or anything like that that does come across, so... We've got a good partnership going along and, you know, it's, it's a really good team that we have. And you notice as well, it's 11 versus 11. You know, it's a friendly game with, with all capable human players, which is something that I really enjoy. And plus, you know, we had a fantastic result, result out of this game. So, you know, please do enjoy the game. And yeah, uh, what we're going to be moving on to today, I just wanted to talk about something, you know, usually when... I don't know if you guys have the feeling, you know, whenever you have like uh, one of these friendlies or these... Uh, FIFA games and you're mid, you're mid match, okay. You need to understand this. Then all of a sudden, like your tummy starts rumbling. You know, like for me, my tummy starts rumbling, rumbling sometimes. I'm like, shit. Like I don't know if I need to go for a doo doo or not. You know, one of those ones. And then sometimes I've only had it once where I started sweating, man. You know, trying to hold this doo doo. I didn't want to leave the game because I was doing really well. And it's one of those ones where I had to just fight it through and then leg it to the toilet after. But now nah, all blessed. Just wanted to see if anyone has had that experience or anything like that where, you know, when they, they when they fought, but they, you know, a shot comes out. But nah, that's never happened to me. But, you know, sharing experiences, you know, just over here. <laughs> but no, moving over to like transfers and what we're going to be talking about today. You know, there's there's so much going on within this summer market. Uh, we've got Di Di Dybala. Dybala, who used to be a Juve man. He's been at Juve for such a long time. You know, he's, he's been rumoured to stay, of course, in the uh, Italian league. You know, that's something that he's uh, comfortable with. And especially at the age that he's in now, you know, he was rumoured previously with the likes of like Tottenham as well as United. But now nah, I think he's going to stay within the Italian league. The, the front runners for his purchase are Inter Milan. You know, uh, there, there is rumours that AC Milan want to get into that as well now, which, you know, it's going to be quite insane, of course, with him playing alongside the GOAT, you know, Origi coming from Liverpool for AC Milan. But... From what I was hearing, they, I think the the rumor is he's going to go to Inter because uh, was it AC Milan can't meet the demands of his contract. So that'll be as mentioned in my previous videos a really good purchase for Inter with you know Lukaku coming back, you got Dybala and then Martinez as well. So it'd be interesting to see how this area are you know proceeds, especially with Pogba going to Juve as well. So it's going to make it slightly more competitive, just depending on the attitude that Pogba brings or if he's going to be bringing different haircuts to every single match. So. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens with Dybala. And then another one that I did see was Witzel, you know, Axel Witzel, you know, he was playing in the Russian league for so long and now he progressed, you know, over to Dortmund, which I thought it was a bit too late in his career because he was always a fantastic player. I think he's always gone for the money and, and that, again, is just a personal uh, opinion. You know, he's always been that money man and when he did move to Dortmund, that was quite surprising, to be honest with you. I thought he was going to do like an Oscar or something like that and just stay in the Russian league for like his entire career. Uh, which is unfortunate because a lot of Brazilians that are really good players tend to stay over in the Brazilian league for, not Brazilian, sorry, uh, the uh, Russian or Ukrainian leagues for quite a while. But, you know, they've, they've got so much potential to, you know, do well within like other leagues such as like the Spanish, Italian or even like the the Premier League. But, you know, one of the players that did move over, I think, I think it was from Zenit in Russia to Barcelona, which was Malcolm, you know, 
He was always a goat on like football manager, you know, his speed, his uh, shooting, his dribbling was always good. But then when he moved over to Barca, he was a he was a liability. I think he just couldn't mould or gel within the team. But again, I, I don't know if it was maybe Barca wasn't the best choice for him. But yeah, he, he wasn't great, you know, in, in general. But no, I think, you know, Witzel made a good choice to move over to Dortmund. And he's always been like a, a first team regular player for the national team as well. He's around like 33 now, so he's getting a bit old. I think he's 33 or something I was reading. So he's moved over to Atletico Madrid, which is a, a good purchase, especially with his physical and aggressive type of play style, which suits, uh, uh, you know, the team that Atletico have. And they've always been like that. You know, we did see it in the Champions League against, what is it, Man City, where there was a, a what is it, a fight off or something like that at the end of the game. So, you know, they, they've got a very, you know, they've always had a brutal team, Atletico Madrid. So... You know, that's a good purchase for them. And, you know, that, that does showcase, you know, with Dortmund then that Bellingham will stay for another year. You know, he, he has been rumoured over to, like, the likes of Liverpool and other teams over the summer period. But I, I don't see him leaving now with uh, Witzel leaving. I do see him being more of a consistent first-team player and uh, being dependent as the box, uh, box to box or even ball-winning, uh, you know, midfielder that he is. You know, he's got so many capabilities under his uh, belt as a player. So... No, I think that'll be it'll be interesting to see if Liverpool do go ahead next year to purchase him. Especially they haven't made many let's say purchases within the midfield. They do have Carvalho from Fulham, but again a very youthful signing. Bellingham will be a youthful signing, but of course he's been proven within the European scene as well as the uh, the national team as well. So he's got a bit more experience in that belt. But yeah, still very young. But I feel that, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed that we get him at Liverpool next season. Especially, we, we, we're not going to strengthen the midfield this year. So, we're, we're relying on what we have so far within, yeah, within the uh, the team squad that we have. But I don't know who it was now. I'm just thinking on top of my head. It's just come on the, uh, it's just come over in my head. That there was a bid that Liverpool were making for a replacement. Or they were offering Cater as a replacement. But I can't remember who it was for. Oh, wait, no. It was Barella. Yeah, it was Barella Inter, who's a, a very youthful player. And uh, I think Liverpool were offering money as well as Cater as part of the deal. So <coughs> that's going to be really interesting if, if that does go ahead. Because, you know, Cater's always been injury prone for Liverpool over like the, the, the time that he's been with Liverpool. You know, he we did buy him at a, a very high fee at that time uh, for what I felt. Um, you know, I thought he was going to be a very good player, very similar to like, let's say, Kante, but not more of a defensive player, but more like a genie going like up and down as much as he can and pressurizing as much as he could. But that guy has no end game, man. Like I, I, what I mean by end game is we, me and my mate, we always take the, the piss out of him is like we always say he's got no Avenger because he, he runs as much as he can. Like Kata's really good at running, dribbling, but then... He doesn't know what to do, like at, like the finishing touch. It's very similar to Sterling as well, where he, when he was at Liverpool, he would run like really well, but then he doesn't know what to do. Uh, you know, Sterling nowadays just dives, you know, if he doesn't know what to do. But Keita, he just loses the ball. Or he does like a misplace of a pass. Like that's something that he, he hasn't perfected within his final touches, making him lethal as a player. You know, it's just been unfortunate with his injuries, you know, hampering his career, but... You know, I do see him leaving Liverpool soon. I think next year, again, is going to be injury prone again. Hopefully we don't, you know, get him out for a long period of time, especially with the risk that we're taking with not really signing a midfielder. But of course, we've got the likes of Jones. We've got the likes of Elliot and now Carvalho in that midfield or attacking position. So, <coughs> God damn, I'm still recovering from like my illness, man. Like I was ill last week, man, from this allergy asthma that I've got and I've got this dirty cough now sometimes that it comes along. So apologies, guys. But YOLO and it. it's just part of the, the way that we're trying to recover. And yeah, so moving away from like Witzel, then we got Nkuku for Leipzig, uh, Leipzig sorry, for Germany. So, you know, he's he's been rumoured at a number of clubs this season, such as the likes of United. you got Arsenal as well as like big boy clubs as well. So, um, you know, with him just signing a new contract, which is... Uh, you know, giving him a pay rise, but not just that, it, it helps Leipzig as well with their, you know, minimum clause that they've placed on him, which is around 51 mil. Um, I think 2023, it goes to like 60 mil or something like that, uh, 60 uh, mil uh, in general. So I think, you know, it's a good business proposition for, for Leipzig, especially as, you know, we, he hopefully he's not going to be a one season one day. You know, he's still a very youthful player. He's a fantastic player of what he done. Um, 
with them this season, especially in the Champions League as well. You know, goal scoring and assisting was was very high in his uh, you know capabilities. You know, in the Bundesliga, he he had around like 33 games in total, and he had 20 goals that he scored, and then he done 14 assists. So, you know, uh, he's he's both strong at goal scoring as well as assisting as well. So a very good you know, player overall. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens next year. I think, you know, he will stay at Leipzig this season because they, they do have a very strong team and they just won like their first major trophy, which is the Polka um, in the German, let's say, uh, cup side of things. So, you know, with Leipzig as well as like Salzburg, you've got the Red Bulls, you know, these these Red Bull company side of things, they, yeah, they're money driven or whatever the case is and they've come from like the lowest divisions all the way high and whatever the case is, but... They've done a fantastic job with like their youth uh, program and the signings that they've made. Like, you know, they they've been hassled in the German league as well as like the Austrian league or wherever the cases are. But you know what they've done with the teams is fantastic, especially the youth side of things and developing those players and how they inter move players within each of the clubs. Like I know that they bring in, you know, Red Bull in in uh, was it America, the club that they have down there to like the Austrian league or even the German league. To play there so I think they do fantastic especially like nurturing the talent um, internally before they you know sell them off for such a ridiculous fee um, but again that's part of their philosophy and they've done well with like Cater for example was from that umbrella and we and we Liverpool had their pants pulled down I feel you know with the purchase of Cater for that uh, let's say reasoning but no fantastic team Leipzig so I do feel that he'll stay with them this season and then next season look at the likes of maybe Chelsea or even United but or even PSG, you know, PSG were, were rumoured for him as well. I do see him moving over to PSG, especially with him being a French national and the, the team that they have. So I think that will be a more of a logical buy at 60 mil. Again, if he does prove to himself that he's not a one-season wonder and, and he's capable of producing those goals and assists. And if he is capable, then he would be a fantastic asset to Liverpool as well, especially as we always look for like the goals and assists, you know, the high ratio that the players do have for that. So... No, I think it'll be interesting to see what, what happens with Nkuku for next season. Um, and then one, one, uh, you know, one signing who I always thought that Liverpool had was really good in their youth team was was this Nigerian, uh, Owoni. He, he was always fantastic for us in the youth, but we always loaned him out. I don't know why. You know, he was always on loan. It was one of those ones. But whenever I was playing FIFA in like the old days, he was a, a player that I used to bring on as a sub. And he was always fantastic as a player. You know, he's he's at Union Berlin in uh, Germany, who's who's had a fantastic season, you know, overall in the Bundesliga. He's been rumoured to go over to Nottingham Forest, who, you know, have just been promoted, but it's for like a, a very hefty fee of 20 million. So that's going to be really interesting to see how he moulds in with them. You know, of course, he was being loaned out as a youthful player to many teams across like his career. You know, this is going to be a very physical and proven league that, you know, he hasn't had experiences yet, so it's going to be really interesting to see how he moulds in. But, you know, he had 15 goals under his belt and then one assist to bring them fifth in the Bundesliga, which is actually a really good accomplishment. So, you know, touche to them. So let's see what happens with um, him next season at uh, Nottingham Forest. And then just finishing you off with uh, a couple more. So we've got Pope, who I feel should be England's number one. You know, he's always been proven. I know he's at Burnley and they've been relegated or whatnot, but as a goalkeeper a shot stopper and just a general presence in goal he literally saves Burnley on so many occasions he's like a De Gea for Burnley like he is such a good goalkeeper and I don't know why Pickford gets chosen over him or even Rams Ramsdale for Arsenal like Pope should be England's number one and you know he's now being rumoured and I think he will be acquired by Newcastle who Newcastle will be looking at going for like European you know, a place in, the, in in either Europa. I don't see them challenging for Champions League just yet, depending on the purchases that they made. But, you know, when we did see, you know, Eddie Howe, when he, when he did take over Newcastle, they were like the second most informed team or something like that for the second half of the season. It was a ridiculous stat. And, and of course, Liverpool would be, in, you know, at the top of that side of things. But, no, I think it'll be interesting to see what they do now, especially with the summer period and, you know, the purchases and all the acquisitions that they do make. But... You know, that'll be a really good, you know, first, how do you say, like a goalkeeper, you know, sub or even the first team side of things. They've got a very strong goalkeeper depth. So that's actually really good for them. And then, yeah, just a, a, a last one is just for United. You know, as I mentioned in my previous videos, they don't have that buying power or the stature behind them anymore. There's this youthful player for Derby. I don't know how to say his name, but it's Malcolm Ebi, 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 Ebi? Uh, Apologies for saying it incorrect, but... 
you know, he's, he's a fantastic youthful player who's chosen Palace over United, so that's just pure banter, just to showcase how, how rubbish United are. And, and it's a good, you know, opportunity for him to be at Crystal Palace because, you know, they've done very well with Vieira, so that'll be really good. But no, guys, that's the end of the video. I do appreciate you sticking by. Please do like and subscribe as always. And yeah, I'll catch you guys on tomorrow's video. Take care. Bye-bye.